Thank you for joining us on this, our next podcast at Simple and Natural, the health food store in Wanstead, E11 London. And today we're speaking once again with proprietor John Wishart. Hi, John. Yeah, hi, Martin. How are you doing? I'm doing not too bad today, thanks, Martin. It's been a nice sunny day. Enjoyed it. You beat me to it. The weather's been fantastic today. It's been beautiful. So today we're going to be speaking about simple living. Simple living, yeah. And we've got a story or two to share with people today. Yeah. Well, basically what I want to do is tell people my own story. Yes. about how I've uh, managed to keep the business open for 14 years and how the, the sacrifices that I've had to make and uh, the adjustments I've had to make to my own lifestyle to simplify it, strip it down and in the process of doing so found it to be very rewarding and in fact very enjoyable. Tell us more, uh, right. obviously you've got the shop here yep. in High Street, yeah. number 3A Yeah. and this is your business and also partly your social yes, it scene. Is. Yeah. Well, the shop has a great little community feel about it and very often we have a few people round here, we sit outside and observe life and uh, it's very enjoyable because it provides a nice relaxing atmosphere and uh, we've got the trees across the road and I've designed it in such a way as it to make it a place where people can feel uh, more relaxed and less uptight about their shopping. Well, I, I think that makes sense because of the nature of the business. I guess a lot of people come in here not necessarily knowing what it is they want or need for their yeah. ailments or, yeah. and what they're suffering from at yeah. times. And yeah. so they come in here for a bit of a, for an advice. For a bit of advice, yeah. yeah. And I think to get people to open up sometimes, you have to create a relaxing kind of ambience and then they, they tend to tell you about the problems more readily. The thing about the business, though, is it's been 14 years in the making to bring it to its... Uh, the pinnacle that it's at today, I suppose you could say. And in order to keep it going, I've found through default that uh, I've had to make quite a lot of sacrifices, which if I hadn't have had to, I wouldn't have. But in the process of making these sacrifices and adjustments to my life, I found the process to be very rewarding and in fact very enjoyable. And I'd like to share a little bit of my experience with some of the listeners and perhaps who knows they might incorporate some of those changes into their own lives and reap the benefits. It's pretty difficult financially just now for all shopkeepers and I found that out pretty early on when we hit the recession at the back of 2000 then uh, business did plummet for a while and so it was difficult to keep going and I had to make some adjustments to my life, the main one being that I had to rent my flat out for some time and uh, live in a more a smaller smaller accommodation more spartan and uh, i didn't feel good about doing that at the time because i felt i was losing something which i which i valued i.e the my flat and all its accoutrements and furniture and things and basically the, the luxury of it but i soon found that um although i was living in new spartan surroundings i, I had my guitar i had uh, a keen interest in songwriting and I found that those very Spartan surroundings enabled me to journey within myself and become more creative. And so not having all the distractions of modern life, i.e. a TV and a computer and lots of things around the house, enabled me to become more creative and more insightful. And I think if you do live in a Spartan type of environment, for instance, you, you, you might consider the life of a monk to be something similar. But you certainly journey inside yourself and in the process of doing that I think you become more creative and more self-aware. So these things that act as distractions are actually distract us from ourselves and becoming more creative and being more expressive in life. Well it sounds like this has helped you to discover yourself a bit more as well, has it? It's been then, it has been a, a journey of discovery. Uh, prior to opening the shop, I did go to a, a Buddhist retreat, I mean, about 15, 16 years ago, and it was in a, it was in a hillside in Monmouthshire, the border with Wales. And we didn't speak for nine days. There was nothing of uh, uh, nothing to distract us. In fact, we, weren't, we didn't even look in, into each other's eyes. That was, that was a, a rule of the place. And that was a great journey into my subconscious and to discover, you know, the things that were pulling me and... Uh, things that I was uh, influenced by and, and to be able to reflect in those in the silence of that hillside and then to come back to London and feel the, the mania of London of course is quite a shock to the system and so I think that's what I've chosen to do is withdraw from that mania and uh, to, to, to have a little uh, 
I suppose a little ivory tower you might call this, somewhere where I could uh, wrap myself in and protect myself from the world outside. So I guess that's what I've done. There's been quite a lot of changes though, haven't there? This one thing, for example, where you mm. don't speak to somebody for nearly nine days. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously with the way technology's going these days, yeah. iPads, iPhones, yeah. computers, yeah. I wonder how long it is between speaking with one person and another for the average person. Yeah. It's a matter of minutes, I would have thought. But we need that silence and we need that detachment for a while to, 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 to make that journey into Well, I, I can totally relate to that. I yeah. get, it's the yin-yang yeah. scenario, isn't it? You know, you don't appreciate the summer without the winter yeah. and, and the similar yeah. sort of thing. So, um, yeah. But what I'd really like to say to all the people out there is this. Listen, if you've got lots of things in your house, like my mum and dad did, they have lots of copper uh, pots and um, things hanging in the wall and ornaments everywhere. And at the end of the day, they were all just given away. And my mum, as she grew older, could see the, the futility in having them. In fact, the, the, the mere fact that, the, that she had to get up and clean them. And in fact, they were just uh, amounted to extra work for her at the end of the day. And what I've noticed is when people talk about their houses and their places of abode, sometimes they do it with great pride. And what they uh, fail to realise is that the people listening to them aren't really interested in them talking about their houses. People are really interested in connecting with each other. Totally. And, you know, when people talk about their houses and the material objects, as if that's meant to be some sort of stimulus to someone else, it usually ends up putting that other person off them. And so when we move away from materialism physically and mentally, I think we can find union with other people a little more readily. I think, as you say, if we strip it back, the, the basis is uh, connecting with each other yeah. and what we're about as individuals. Yeah. And I, I would suggest, as you have, I think, there indirectly, yeah. uh, it, at some point, take a step back and put, put yourself in that yeah. empty room mentally and say to yourself, uh, if I was having a conversation with somebody yeah. and I was uh, penniless, mm. I didn't have any belongings, mm. what would it be that I could offer? Yeah. What am I about as a person yeah. Uh, yeah. other than these materialistic yeah. you know, things around me? Yeah, absolutely. I think in our present day society, we create, we create wants, of course, but really essentially what we we require is our needs to be fulfilled. And of course, all these wants are are just things stacked on top of that which are completely unnecessary. But that is the system and that is what we're inclined to do and we want to keep up with the Joneses. But let me tell all, all you people out there, that's a big trap, don't fall into it. I, I was in that trap for some time myself, but thankfully I had an awakening and my awareness now, my, my awareness of these situations is much great, greater and much more vivid. And so I realised that that's not the life for me and Everyone and each and every one of us can learn to live more simply and take the stress out of our life that all this materialism and all this uh, acquisition of um, material goods and ask yourself, well, why am I doing that? Doing it's this? Why am I buying this? And of course, you will come to the conclusion is to impress other people and uh, keeping up with the Joneses, in other words. And so why should you need to impress someone else? Think of that. Why should you need to impress someone else? It's an interesting question because yeah. uh, often uh, it's not necessarily why should I impress someone else, but it's yeah. almost, I don't know if you agree with me, but um, I, I would suggest that it's almost an easy get out. It's an easy answer to, to the more fundamental question that you were mentioning earlier which yeah. is you know what am I about as a person yeah. well it's a, it's, a, it's a type of fetishism Martin it's a fetish mm -hmm. materialism I mean Marx called it commodity fetishism because he recognized the worthlessness in it mm. and he recognized it as purely a way of feeding the system and keeping the, the momentum of production uh, going you know yeah and so once we realize it's a fetishism it is a fetish rather and uh, it's not really natural to us, you know. Uh, I think a lot of it is because of insecurity and fear of the f the being alone and, of course, dying ultimately. And people think that somehow or another they'll f be more secure with these things. Well, we live also in a very visual world, don't we? So I guess, yeah. again, the more belongings you have and yeah. the better they look to other people, then, again, you can be forgiven for thinking, well, they're yeah. impressed. Yeah, but they because, because obviously you're not going to have the chance to speak to 
each yeah. and every person in your street, yeah. In, yeah. in your neighbourhood, yeah. uh, in the world. Mm. So uh, often um, a quick glance at what you have rather than yeah. finding out verbally what you're about and, and yeah. discussing it with people yeah, yeah, and having yeah. an opportunity. But well, people measure you by that. So well, some, yeah, some, for sure. Some people do. But, but again, then that, that raises the question as well, uh, should you be worried about other people judging you well, this is just um, exactly the on, thing. on that level? Yeah, just exactly the thing. As I said, when I, when I uh, moved from my comfy flat, uh, purely for survival purposes and to a more Spartan environment, of course I felt that I was losing something. But very quickly I found that I enriched myself culturally and uh, creatively. And that was, that was by virtue of the, the, the Spartan surroundings I, I found myself in to, um, to achieve some sort of stimulation and to create stimulation. Of course, you have to travel inside in those environments because there's nothing outside to distract you. And this was the, the, the process that I, uh, I underwent. And uh, I created, I produced two albums of music in that, in that environment. And so I'm, I'm really glad that I did that. And now when I, I'm, I'm back in my flat, I will keep it very simple and very straightforward. And I, I certainly, I, uh, I think back to a book I, I read by a, an American authoress, she was called uh, Susan Jeffers, a self-help book. And uh, it compared uh, clutter in your house and things in your house that you don't need with fat in your body. And I think it's a really good uh, analogy because we, uh, we don't need all the clutter we think we need. And we certainly don't need all the fat that we've got in our body sometimes. And so... It's just, uh, it's a bit like having a handicap in a horse race, let's put it that way. And so this simple living has got a lot to be said for it. And when I look around here in Wanstead and I see some of the uh, aspirant ways that, 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 that people try to accumulate you know, material things, and I think, well, you know, I think you need to redirect your energies uh, and perhaps think more of your health, think more about what you're eating. And... Uh, Try and build a community around yourself of some sort because we do suffer in London and we all know from experience something called dysfunctional independence. People become very separate and very, very individualised and ultimately very lonely of course. But I want to tell you about my story and how I overcame the situation that, that I found myself in. And it was through a, a journey inside and a, a growing awareness of what made me happy. And uh, as a younger man, I always remember chasing after things which only really sort of had no substance to them and which I couldn't sustain. And of course, it was from one thing to the next. But when you can create a fairly Spartan type of environment and you can travel inside and become creative to make yourself happy, ultimately, that's the purpose of it. We want to thrive in this life. Let's be happy. Let's thrive. Why have a car? Why have a big house? You don't need these, the, 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 this car. London's got a very efficient tra transport network. You don't need a big house. You might think you do to impress other people. But anyone who thinks from that premise in the first place has uh, some inadequacy in them. And I think we should look at ourselves deeply. I don't care about what people think so much about where you live or the car you drive or what clothes you've got on. Just uh, go on your own journey, and your own journey will surely bring you back to your fellow man and it will connect you with the universe. Ultimately, that's each of our, our journeys. That's what we want to do. We want the connectedness of nature and each other. It's difficult when you've got such a disparate population in a large city like London, though. Well, yes, so there's certainly a few problems and issues there we've been discussing, John. What would you say to solutions? Well... The solutions that I would offer to everyone are these. I would suggest to them that if they've got a big car, think about getting a smaller car. Something that's going to be uh, more manageable financially and a little less damaging to the environment. Always think about the environment. You're an organism of this earth, you're part of it. Ultimately you'll perish when it perishes. Think about these things that are important. And think about unloading some of the, perhaps some of the furniture, some of the, the decor that you have in your house, things that are probably adding to your workload. What you were saying earlier about porcelain and ornaments. Yes. You end up dusting them how many times? Well, how many times a day do you have to do that? And, and they, they just, yeah, the brass yeah, and they just sit there and they, yeah. it's not like you use them uh, for yeah. anything uh, specific. They just well, sit there. I think there's a very, the, the, there's a very good point to be made here at this, at this juncture. 
because in our type of society, sex sells. And of course, when a, a young couple uh, meet each other, and of course, that's a that's a very large part of the relationship. And so, all the uh, so we use the word accoutrements again, and the the things associated with uh, um, commodity fetishism uh, are, are often, you know, snapped up by young couples because somehow or another these things are are, are um, thought to be romantic and sexy through the uh, the medium of advertising, which we use so much of. But of course, ultimately these. Young people soon find out that these things are absolutely worthless, unless, of course, they can sell them and get money for them. Uh, and I think, as you, you you mentioned, Martin, I think people need to try and search to find out who they are themselves and what their what the limits are, what 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 they like, you know, I mean, what they don't like, because each and every one of us believes ourselves to have limits which we don't have, and imagines ourselves to be very tolerant, and in many cases we aren't and put to the test. And so having a, having a lot of things around to distract you won't ultimately solve the problem. The journey inside is the only thing that will solve the problem. And so I just ask people to unload a lot of the material goods. They can't take it with them. And to look for simpler lifestyles and to eat simpler food. Because the more simple the food, the better it is for you. And the same can be said of your life. The less you have to worry about, the happier you'll be. And I, I remember reading a story about uh, an old tramp in China. It was um, it was a Taoist story, so it had some philosophical content. And it was about an old tramp in China who seemed to walk around so happily all the time. And of course, someone asked, "Why are you so happy?" And he said, "Well, I've got nothing to worry about." And of course, that's an extreme analogy, but yeah, we need to head in that direction. Eat simpler, live more simply, and try and cultivate our creative creative side and find enjoyment through a journey inside and not a journey outside. Attacking our fellow human beings and being frustrated with our lot. You can find peace if you take the simple path, and I'd ask all of you at least to experiment with it. Well, that all sounds perfectly sensible to me and quite logical. So, thank you, John, for speaking to us once again. And thank you, Martin. It's been a we, great pleasure. We look forward to speaking to you on the next podcast here from Simple and Natural. And I think one final thing to point out is that people often think health food, uh, I don't need that right now because I'm healthy already. Mm. I'm healthy as I am, or at least mm. I haven't got any specific dietary requirements. Mm. Mm. Sometimes it might be worth thinking to yourself out there, well, pop along and see what it's all about now mm. rather than when I have to mm. uh, just because well there's so much to explore here and well there is um, so many alternatives so many alternatives and pop along and find out about the virtues of simple living a simple diet and uh, life becomes generally more simple things aren't as complicated as they sometimes seem John thanks very much thank you <laughs>